Eric, for now, Darling here with uh, Darling Data. And uh, I'd like to thank the lovely and talented Randolph West for uh, giving me some very good specific suggestions on uh, my audio settings last night, uh, especially for bearing with me while I was in the midst of several red wines uh, and was a little bit unaware of my surroundings. Uh, Randolph ran me through a vocal analyzer. I'm not sure if that's a fetish yet or not, but it's on the table now. Uh, and anyway, uh, the, the suggestions were to uh, reduce the gain a little bit and adjust the compressor setting a little bit so that I got peaks instead of tables. So there we go. Uh, thank you, Randolph. They, they's a hell of a them. Uh, today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about how... A little bit, well, so in a video recorded from the last 24 to 48 hours, I hesitate to use terms like yesterday and today because due to time zones and other temporal dilemmas, uh, we, we, never, we never know how correct those terms ever were. If I was in New Zealand, it could be two days ago. But uh, in, in a video recorded from the last 24 to 48 hours, uh, I talked a little bit about how if you need to um, calculate an expression, right, like run a function on a column, uh, add two columns together, like tack something onto a column, uh, SQL Server can't use those expressions to seek to data in an index because those expressions happen at a later point in a query running than when you first touch an index or when you touch a table, when you touch those 8KB pages that, uh, that make up your tables and indexes and basically everything in SQL Server. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, run this query, and my, my, the goal of this query is to look for uh, users in the Stack Overflow database who have more than one million combined upvotes and downvotes. My, me my meteorologist skills are increasing with every video. Watch out. So I'm, I'm going to be all powerful and control the weather, control the weather like a Cheney. So uh, if we run this query and we look at the query plan, uh, we're going to take about 444 milliseconds to scan the entire clustered index and return one single row. If we look at the details of the clustered index scan, we are going to have this big predicate over here, upvotes plus downvotes greater than or equal to one million dollars. My meteorologist skills really took a steep, steep fall on that one. Uh, so, of course, job interview, uh, red meat right there, a clustered index scan. Users are complaining, dear Lord. Uh, and so let's create an index on the users table on the upvotes and downvotes columns. Let's, let's see what kind of, uh, let's see if we're going to get the job or not. We're going to run this and look at the query plan, because that's what we do here. We look at query plans all day long. We stare at them. And this sort of depressingly didn't change execution time all that much. This still took right around 430 milliseconds. The last one was like 440 milliseconds. That could have just been, like, like Windows Update could have been running in the background and looking for something, and that could explain like the 10 millisecond change in CPU time there. So let's not get too hung up. Let's not pretend that we won. All right. So the main problem is that we still have this expression that needs to get calculated for SQL Server to find what we need. And of course, if we, uh, the, the way that uh, you know, uh, non or the way that indexes in general are stored, we don't have uh, any metadata about. Uh, I mean, like we know what values are in upvotes, and we know what values are in downvotes, but we don't have any information about what, like, a calculation on those two columns would produce. Right, single server doesn't track that. Same thing with like date columns or date time, any time related column. Really, if you have two of them in an index, SQL Server's like SQL Server's not saying they're like, oh well, there's an hour between them, and it was like 21 days, <laughs> 16 hours, seven days, whatever that. Uh, no, nothing compares to you, Eric. Is like SQL Server doesn't track the amount of like time between two date columns, right? So if whenever we need to calculate something based on two date columns, two columns added together, things like that, we need to pre-compute that so SQL Server can find that data. All right. So uh, what a lot of folks out there might want to do is create a filtered index, uh, maybe to figure out where 
up votes plus down votes are already greater than a million. Unfortunately, that is, uh, you can tell by the red squiggle and IntelliSense is throwing right there uh, that uh, we are not going to be able to create this. So if we try to say uh, where up votes plus down votes um, is uh, pl is greater than or equal to one million, we're not going to be able to do that. Even if we used advanced parentheses technology, we would not be able to create a filtered index based on that. So disappointing there. I think you can do that in Oracle. So maybe you should just use Oracle instead. Sorry, Microsoft. But what we can do is we can do the old Microsoft SQL Server two-step, and we can create a computed column that uh, gives us the results of up upvotes plus downvotes. And note that we don't even have to persist this in order to uh, in order to create an index on it. Now, just creating that computed column, even not persisting it, will give us, if I remember correctly, a slightly better estimate than before. Not great, not awesome, but better. But we still don't. We're still not able to seek to the data we care about. But now SQL Server is at least like, hey, hey, maybe. Maybe an index would help. So SQL Server, like SQL Server, will give you a missing index request in some cases, but SQL Server won't say, "Oh, if you create a computed column and then create an index, everything will be better." But uh, SQL Server before is just like, "Nah, man, you're screwed." So uh, there's that. So let's let's follow SQL Server's now very helpful missing index advice, and let's let's create a non-clustered index on our computed column. Notice how that was pretty quick, right? So that was SQL Server actually writing all those values down in the index before we just had a virtual column where SQL Server would still have to compute that every time. But now that we have it all written down, we can, helpfully, stealthily, much more quickly than before, seek into our index. Right? Now, instead of taking about 430 to 440 milliseconds, depending on what Windows Update is doing, we can... Oh, my finger went way over weird. I, I, I tilted. That was my fault. <laughs> uh, we get... Uh, oh, my finger. I'm losing my finger again. Uh, we get uh, one row back in zero seconds and a slightly better estimate of 293. Before it was 1570, before it was something else. I forget. I'll have to rewatch the video and maybe... Edit that in. Just kidding. Not doing that for a 10-minute YouTube video. <laughs> you want me to do that, you'll have to pay me. Uh, one thing, though, <clears throat> that is disappointing about uh, computed columns is that what helps SQL Server use them is something called expression matching. Now, in this query up here, notice we didn't touch the uh, up down computed column directly but SQL Server was still able to use that index it was able to match the expression in our where clause to the computed column and use the index based on that which is great but it doesn't work if we tinker with that expression at all so let's run these two queries back to back we get one row back from both of them all right. this one again seeks to the data we care about zero seconds and uh, the one down here unfortunately scans the whole index is back to around 440 something milliseconds uh, with a really awful estimate of 73,000 uh, if anyone from Microsoft is watching and you happen to know anyone who works on SQL Server Management Studio can I get a comma can, I, can we get some commas and numbers? Can it be a setting to add whatever regionally appropriate terminator to uh, to thousands is in our in our numbers? I know that some countries use dots, other countries use commas. Uh, here in the U.S. of A., we are fully committed to the comma, and it would be very useful if we could get some commas in our numbers in SQL Server Management Studio. Please, I beg of you, I beg of you, you have access to all sorts of functions in C-sharp, like format and whatnot. They can, they, can, they can produce values, numerical values, that have commas or whatever regionally appropriate thousands terminator you have, or hundreds or I don't know, math is, math is beyond me. Anyway, uh, this is another example 
of how, if you need to calculate an expression in a join or where clause, you might not be able to do it cleanly, even with a good index on the columns that you care about, because the expression that, that those columns or whatever else produces, a function like left, right, R trim, level trim, substring, replace, all that stuff, SQL Server doesn't store that. Right, SQL Server doesn't have access to that. SQL Server runs those expressions at a different point in the query than when it touches the, the index and is able to seek the values. So uh, be very careful with how you express things like that in your queries. Uh, if you find yourselves in a, a performance quandary where um, an expression like that is causing a scan of an index, it's taking too long, then you might need a computed column and an index to help you locate that data quickly. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, um, I, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope that my petition to uh, not have Beer Gut Magazine uh, uh, permanently ban me from using the name Eric uh, will we'll get enough signatures to uh, pass Congress or whatever happens. I don't know. If, if not, I'm going to start a contest to rename me. That'd be, that'd be fun. Anyway, uh, Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I will see you in another video. Have a good one.